Hey, what's going on guys and girls? I'm Positively Negative and this is my playthrough of Death Stranding. I can't believe I'm actually saying that right now. It's been a long time coming. This moment, I've been waiting for it for what feels like forever. And we're finally here. The game came out almost a week ago and I have been binging it non-stop. Every free moment I've had has been dedicated to playing this game. That's actually the reason why I haven't made any videos about it yet. I've literally just been so busy playing it, I haven't been able to pull myself away to go make a video. But I figured, hey, now's a good time. I'm 12 hours into the game. Should probably let people know I'm still alive. So with this playthrough, what I'm gonna do is keep it lighthearted, fast-paced, funny, throw in some memes every now and again. And I'm gonna cut out a lot of the very long-winded cutscenes and gameplay moments because even though the game is very enjoyable to play, there is a lot of downtime and watching me walk from one place to another for 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time is not enjoyable for entertainment. And I understand that, which is why I'm gonna cut a lot of that out. So with that all being said, I'd like to welcome you to part one of Death Stranding, the prologue. Enjoy. The rope along with the stick are two of mankind's oldest tools. The stick to keep the bad away, the rope used to bring the good towards us. They were our first friends of our own invention. Wherever there were people, there were the rope and the stick. Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave birth to time and space. Once there was an explosion, a bang which set a planet spinning in that space. Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave rise to life as we know it. And then came the next explosion. Yeah, the explosion in my pants when I got my hands on this game. Ah, <laughs> So, day one, November 8th, 2019. Death Stranding is finally out and I have never been more excited or happy to play a game in my entire life. And I love how this game opens up too. It's almost like a book in the sense that, you know, you see the title page or the cover and then you open it up two, three pages in the book, you see the title yet again. I like that. This is gonna be such an experience. I cannot wait just to put so many countless hours of my life into this game. I'm actually, this is gonna sound really corny, but I am grateful to be alive in a time where I can experience this. This might sound totally silly to some of you, but 50, 60 years from now, if we're even still around at that point. I'm gonna take pride in the fact that I can say I was around for Death Stranding. As silly as that sounds for some people, I feel very privileged to be able to say that. Don't be so I like that. Well, the game's telling me not to be serious, so you know what that means. We're totally gonna take everything very, very seriously. A few moments later. Gotta be quicker than that. Ah, fuck. Ah, oh, fuck is right. But at least we're in the game now, and I'm genuinely ashamed to admit how long it took me to find my way out of here. So I'm just gonna let you watch the very, very abridged version of me finally finding the exit to this level. One hour later. Can I climb up this wall? No. Two hours later. Three hours later. Okay, so we just ran into some lady, turned her to dust, probably committed murder, we lost our bike, there is deadly rain outside that ages you if so much as a drop gets on you, and we're stranded in a cave. So what is the first thing you're going to do 
Naturally, take off your clothes, and then let a picture float out into the deadly rain where you will then stick your bare hand and run the risk of getting that hand drenched in said rain that will cause extreme premature aging to said hand. Good job. You need to shut the fuck up! Okay, I'm gonna ruin the handprints for you in about five seconds flat. These things are supposed to be big, creepy, ominous creatures from the world of the dead out to get you, right? And the sounds they make are bone chilling, not gonna lie. But just imagine Bigfoot doing a handstand everywhere he goes. I mean, look at how big the handprints are compared to human feet. People always talk about, oh, Bigfoot, he has big feet. Those are not human-sized feet. Well, these are not human-sized hands. And just imagine Bigfoot walking around in handstand pose everywhere, and you are guaranteed to laugh every time you see these things. And now I have officially ruined all the tension in this scene and every scene following where these things are present. I'm not sorry. There are the ominous figures in the sky. I only see four of them here, but I imagine the fifth one is probably in that really bright spot on the right hand side. And I think the reason they look translucent here, but solid later on, is because of Sam's level of dooms, which Fragile will talk about momentarily. Prologue, Porter. See, like a book. I, I love how this is structured already. I think they're gone. <laughs> what the hell? Didn't mean to grab you so hard. Tears. A chiral allergy. So, you have dooms, like me. I've got the extinction factor. But I think you got me beat. What's your level? You can see them, right? No, but I can sense them. Level two, then. What are you doing here? Trying to stay dry. Same as you. Wanna come work for me? Must be tough out here on your own. Yeah, I thought Fragile Express had plenty of people. Plenty of traitors. Not much left of us now, save for a few honest folks. And on top of that, not much left of me either. Got soaked from neck to toe. I can't help you with that. I make deliveries, that's all. This is Bridges Central Dispatch. Freelance contractor Sam Porter Bridges. Receiver is standing by for drop. The time full fast forwards whatever it touches but it can't wash everything away. The past just won't let go. I'll see you around. Sam Porter Bridges. Wow. What an introduction to both Sam and Fragile there in that first cutscene. Uh, I do want to say right off the bat, you are not seeing whole cutscenes. I am cutting them up a bit because they are quite lengthy. I don't want to spoil them for you in case you want to experience the full thing for yourself or bore you to death. But if you do want to see whole cutscenes, please let me know. I am very interested in how you would like this playthrough to go because ultimately you're going to be the one who's watching it. But while we're on the subject, 
What really stood out to me there was Fragile's accident with Timefall having been drenched from neck to toe. That is tragic, dude. Imagine how terrible it must be to have a face and a, a head that looks your age and then a body that's just so much older, wrinkled, decrepit, not so pretty looking. That must be really confusing mentally, emotionally to deal with. But just thinking about having a partner or, you know, getting with somebody romantically, having them not know that until they see you without your clothes on, that's... Oh god, I don't even want to think about that too long. I don't want to dwell on this. I just wanted to mention that that was really sad. And uh, I feel really bad for her now, having known that. Wow, that's terrible. Another thing that caught my attention was when she mentioned dooms, and the way they talked about it led me to believe that it's some kind of a disease. Sam mentions that he has the extinction factor, so I'm guessing that's kind of like a terminal cancer, almost. There's nothing you can do to cure it or treat it. You're just inevitably waiting for the end, whatever happens at the end once you reach the extinction phase of dooms. So many unknown things about this. What's interesting, though, is that uh, depending on your level of dooms, you have different ways to sense or detect the BTs. Because the way Fragile made it sound is that the level she's at, she can see them, but the level that Sam is at, he can only sense them and get allergic reactions to them, and he's level two. So how many levels of dooms are there? At what levels can we see them? How does that affect our physiology? Uh, how do we get to a higher level of dooms? Does it have to do with our exposure to the BTs? I know one factor is actually your birthday. At the beginning of the game, it asks you to put in your birthday and says, Statistical analysis has indicated that Doom's abilities may vary depending on the sufferer's date of birth. In order to establish your own ability levels, please enter your birthday. So that affects it in some way, shape, or form, but I haven't seen how it affects story or gameplay yet so many questions that I have right now, and I'm sure we'll get them answered in due time. What took you so long? It's not like the legend to come in late. Let the legend come back to life. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. Igor, Bridges Corpse Disposal. Sam Porter, I presume? <laughs> the incinerator how long since he flatlined we don't know the exact TOD but I'd say it's been upwards of 40 hours he wasn't quarantined not sick this is a suicide oh, Jesus we're just lucky we found him at all got him on ice ASAP but who knows when he'll go necro where are you taking him uh, closest incinerators to the north this route's crawling with BTs. Sure you can't use another? I wish I could, but there's no time. Then just burn the poor bastard right here. They put all that Kyrillium in the air so close to town? Can't do it. Better that than trying for the incinerator. Hey, we can do this. We just need someone like you with dooms. He's already in the first stages of necrosis. If we don't hurry, this place is a crater. One debt to society later. And this right here is just the entirety of the third trailer. You've all seen it before, you know what's up. And if you haven't seen it for some reason, well, uh, go watch the third trailer. It's literally this entire cutscene. Boss? Boss! I want to take this moment where you learn about Sam's repatriate abilities that allow him to return from the world of the dead, where we see this BB flashback. And I just want to say for those of you who watched my final speculation video I posted about a week ago that I was right about Cliff. Booyah! 
And that is going to do it for the first episode of my Death Stranding playthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Expect long edit times on future episodes because I can't do this kind of work in a day. And because I'm no longer getting paid for my videos, this is basically more of a hobby than a job now. And if I'm not getting paid, I'm not going to treat it like a job. That's just how it is. But I hope to see you guys on future episodes. I am really enjoying this game right now, and I'm playing more of it than I'm posting because editing the video requires me to step away from the game and not play it. And let's be honest, I just really want to binge the crap out of this right now. So with that being said, I will have finished the game long before you guys see the final episode of the playthrough. As long as you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. I'm going to keep posting these videos regardless because it's fun. And uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to say. I'll see you next time. Bye.